Hello there, Geminis. Welcome to your reading. I had a series of um, images that just kind of popped up. And it's funny, so first of all, I see this uh, this teenager. She's probably like 15, 16. She's really pretty. She's wearing like a Catholic schoolgirl, you know, blouse and the little plaid skirt. And she's in class, almost like chewing bubble gum and she's bored. And uh, she's kind of like closing her eyes, kind of dozing off and daydreaming, okay? So she's in a place that she doesn't want to be in because she's bored. It's not giving her enough stimulation. Um, and I feel like she's very smart. She looks like she's sharp. She looks like she's really smart. So like something in your environment, I feel, is monotonous, is a little bit too like um, they're teaching you theory, but they're not teaching you how to apply uh, theory, put theory to practice. So I feel like, yes, you can sit there and absorb the information, but unless you get some type of a hands-on experience, you might not know how the information is even relevant or how the information is even applicable. So that daydreaming vibe, I almost feel like there is something here that you don't want to, a situation you don't want to be in because you're thinking of opportunities, you're thinking of um, ways in which, you know, you can get out into the world and start to apply your knowledge and, and fix real life problems. So I feel like you're thinking more in terms of practicalities versus, you know, um, it's like practicing something versus learning just the theoretical concept. And that theme is definitely echoed in these um, cards, the first four cards. This is waiting for your ship to come in, three of wands, waiting for excitement, waiting for opportunities, waiting for physically an opportunity where you can flex your muscles, where you can shine, where you can apply everything that you've learned and see what sticks, okay? Um, what I feel is there is an environment that is, you know, it, it's like, a little bit monotonous a little bit routine a little bit mundane and i almost feel like some of you are waiting for that big break i see a lot of people in the entertainment industry okay where you are right now with the uh this is the knight of pentacles and it's in the reverse position these are like little projects little gigs here and there odd jobs making ends meet piecing together you know three like part-time jobs three short-term gigs three contract jobs in order to get by in order to wait for your big break in order to be able to kind of like put yourself on the radar but then always waiting for that opportunity where you're going to catch your big break and you're going to be able to soar. So it's like you have to go through the monotony of this situation in order to really, really appreciate and to be really like to to it's almost like we have to know what it's like to really struggle and to really work hard so that when the big break comes into the picture, when your ship starts to come in, and your income generating potential is able to, you know, multiply. That's when we really are able to appreciate, okay? Um, whatever that's coming through. So I feel like for many of you, you're probably wondering, you know, when is that big job gonna come in? When is that promotion? When is that dream job? When am I gonna be able to get out there and flex my muscles and be seen and heard and to have that major, major big break? So I feel like the universe is prepping you. It's showing you a little bit of, of humility. It's teaching you all about dedication, perseverance, hard work, not giving up, try and try again and once you have mastered those things once you have you know really put your nose to the grindstone work hard in order to be prepared for the success that's coming in that's when the success is going to come in so i feel like there is a element here about needing to collaborate, needing to work, needing to build things up from the ground, needing to also, you know, come to other people and ask them, hey, how would you approach this problem? Or how have you done this in the past? What is your best practice? Or what are some of the things that advice or whatever you can give me? So I feel like the universe is teaching you the value of slow and arduous process and discipline and perseverance. 
in order for the universe to prepare you so that when you get your reward you don't just you know scramble and run away at the first sign of problem of a, when a problem creeps up that you stick it out and then you are diligent about seeing things through okay so there is a lot to be said here about preparation, preparing for the journey, preparing for the process. Success is not something that is like, you know, um, uh, a flash in the pan or it's not something that is just going to rain down on us overnight. It requires a lot of work, a lot of dedication and a lot of sweat and tears in order for us to make it big. And all these little minor adversities or obstacles that we're encountering is teaching us how to problem solve is teaching us how to be humble and patient so that when the big things come into the picture even if it has like so much promise it's always going to come with little annoyances so you're learning a lot about you know uh, strength of character so that you don't run away when things get rough okay so going back to the image that I saw, the little girl in the classroom or the teenager in the classroom, um, when she was daydreaming, these thoughts bubble kind of pop up, like they were popping up five of them. So the first thing is um, she's, she's like in, on stage and she's singing, okay? And uh, I feel like some of you might be, you know, wishing for fame and fortune wishing for that big break, wanting to be on center stage, wanting to shine, wanting an opportunity to display your talents. And I feel like you're going to be able to get that this, this month. Three of Pentacles, sharing your skills and expertise with other people as well as learning from other people. And that's where you're going to be able to refine and hone your skills so that when the big break happens, you're going to be able to kind of uh, showcase yourself, okay? And you're going to be do able to do it in a very refined and, and elegant manner. So what it is, is I feel like you might be a little bit rough around the edges right now, but this process is going to help you refine yourself and make your, whatever it is that you're bringing forth to make it a lot more palatable and a lot more enjoyable for the other people. And then another thought bubble that comes out is uh, I see, you know, those uh, necklaces. They're like two piece of the heart and sometimes it says like best friend on it and then one person keeps one piece, the other person keeps one piece. And so I see two pieces of a necklace, it comes together. So I feel like for some of you, there might be like a big love that you're waiting on, okay? Um, for some of you, I, I feel almost like there was a situation where you gave 110% of yourself. You gave so much of yourself and you might have gotten really sorely hurt. And that past person is coming back in with an apology. Okay, this is, sorry, this is the Ten of Swords. And then we have the fast and swift communication, the Eight of Swords. And I feel like this is a situation where too much has been done. So you have moved on. You've turned your back on that situation. For some of you, it could be an earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn. Somebody who really, really broke your heart. Somebody that, you know, you put on a pedestal and they just didn't reciprocate. They, they didn't see the worth. They knew you were special, but they didn't know to what extent. And I feel like air signs in general, once we turn away emotionally, we, we, we know how to shut off our emotions, kind of like a switch, okay? So I feel like this person really hurt you and they're coming back in, uh, shooting you a lot of messages, eight of wands here. And I feel like, you know, some of the things that they say, um, all, all of the things that they're saying are very belated, like it's too late. But you're still flattered. So, for example, you know they're they're gonna tell you, um, they're gonna tell you like you were really good to me. I really messed up, and I feel like in a way you're glad to hear that because it confirms and it helps validate everything that you're feeling. Like 
I gave a lot of myself to this person and they really did me wrong. They really hurt me. They really took me for granted. They thought I was going to always stay around and you know, jokes on them. So I feel like in a way, the communication makes you very, very happy, but emotionally you have already turned your back on that situation. So you don't have any much, uh, you don't have any more of this love, Queen of Cups reverse, to give that person. So they're going to be shooting you messages, but you're not really reading it you could already be have been blocking them so you're not really getting the messages or until you heard whatever it is that you you were waiting for like i'm really sorry i was a fool whatever the situation is and then you kind of like turn them off or you kind of block them so that you don't need to be bothered with it anymore options are dwindling okay so it's it's more like this is not a good person for me to be in because they took me for granted and now everything is too late too much has been done too much has been said and i'm no longer a fool i'm only going to build things and situations and relationships with people that are worthy of me so when i saw the the thought bubble with the two hearts coming together i feel it's almost like your heart is mended you know the it, there was like um lines that split up the hearts when it comes together your heart is is being mended your heart is being whole again and i feel like there's another person in the picture that is piquing your interest and um here's the thing where the that that second message or the second image ties in with the first so you know a lot of the times right um and this is something that is very prevalent with air signs air signs and especially you guys gemini you live out this fantasy romance in your head and you know it's really really uh, enticing in your head right and you guys do this often you daydream you daydream about scenarios you daydream about what's the other person gonna say what i'm gonna say back and so on and so forth so everything plays out in your head like a movie and especially if it's somebody that you're heavily thinking about that you really like, you play it out, all the possible scenarios in your head. And the thing is, because of this situation that kind of um, brought a sense of realism and reality into you, now you're at a point where you're just like, I'm looking for something real. I'm looking for something stable. I'm looking for something that is long lasting so i feel like you have matured as a result of this disappointment you have really matured and you have two other characters here i have a fire sign sagittarius aries leo and i have an air sign aquarius gemini libra also a water sign pisces cancer or scorpio okay and what i'm feeling is this you're playing out the scenarios in your head if you have all of these suitors, you're playing out the scenarios. And I feel with you guys, you always know, and there's always an order of preference as to who you want the most. But you've been burned in the past and you want to be able to put theory into practice. So it's almost like you want to date, but you want to always, you want to also have that trial run of a relationship with another person before you invest your all and you wish there is a way for you to, it's almost like a, a hypothetical, you know, you might be in one relationship and you're just like, if I leave this relationship, hypothetically, if I leave this person for another person, what is that relationship going to look like? So you start to daydream and fantasize and and conjecture about that other relationship just to see how long term, how viable it is. And so I, I almost feel like there's a frustration here coming into this spread about hypotheticals about wanting so badly to live like an alternate reality you know like an alternate like to be on an alternate um time frame where you can explore other opportunities and then if those things don't work out then you can always come back and return to the status quo it's 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 that intense and so i definitely feel like in the love relationship sector there might be a few options that are available for you 
And I also feel like, you know, you're really, really looking for your stability, four of wands. You're really looking for your other half. And you're almost like looking for this whirlwind romance where the other person's on the same page. The other person will love you and give you everything that will really restore your faith and love in relationships. Whatever that was taken away in the past, you want this new relationship partner to kind of like help you restore it and help you bring you to fullness. And uh, when we enter relationships expecting the other person to kind of complete us, we want to be a little bit careful about that. That's kind of um, placing unfair expectations on the other person. And it's also, it should be a little bit of a warning sign for you guys to put so much emphasis on relationships wherein you're expecting the other person to fulfill you rather than going out into the world and fulfilling yourself but then also placing so much emphasis and, and so much expectations on a relationship partner is always you know, a setup that is not healthy. So you wanna be a little bit careful about that, okay? So I see here a big element about wanting to, you know, kind of like um, start anew, start over and have something brand new, something a little bit more stable but I also feel like there's this um, really, really strong need as well about being able to experiment without the risk of losing the status quo. Okay, and, and so I feel like, you know, in the realm of fantasy, everything is just really um, available for you to experiment. But in the real world, you're a little bit frustrated because physical constraints do not allow you to do that. Okay? So I, I, I'm sensing this, this fantasy versus reality, duality here coming into the picture. And you guys are such, you guys are such hopeless romantics. And I feel almost like the world of the fantasy is always going to be a lot more alluring than the real world, because that's where your, all of your fantasies get um, to be acted out, get to be realized without any real world repercussions. And whereas the here and now, where you're at right now, waiting for resolutions, waiting for contact, waiting for a situation to um, come together where people can start cooperating, I feel like the wait is can be very frustrating, okay? Um, so aside from that, uh, the thought bubble. So I think there were four. I mentioned the heart, I mentioned as well the um, what was that first one? What was that first one? So on stage, and then I mentioned the heart. So what I'm also feeling as well is um, this, I see this tent and it's like in the middle of the woods, okay? Wanting peace and, si and quiet as well. And funnily enough, this card or this spread is filled with a lot of people wanting companionship wanting you know connections with other people wanting recognition even from other people but deep down there's a need to retreat that you might be as well overlooking i feel when we're constantly in gemini's as an air sign you guys are the most wired okay you're very very connected through social media through electronics through communication um through like banter and just you know office politics and chit chat and so I feel like there is also this need in you as well that you might not be aware of or you might be neglecting. This need to kind of unplug from the world and to kind of like spend time by yourself doing hobbies, doing activities on your own. And I feel like the retreat and to drown out the noise and to kind of like, you know, uh, cocoon yourself into a safety environment whatever it is like um you know uh, spending a, a weekend in sleeping in late being away from people to going for a hike by yourself doing like taking a trip by yourself i feel like the need for that is really important for the later part of this month where you can rewire where you can recharge where you can you know kind of like really draw your energy back and to figure out and to start to even pull in the things that are good for you without the distractions of everything else in your environment. 
I also feel like there is also a need here to stop communicating with people from the past that have not seen your worth or have seen your worth only when it was too late and then to be able to kind of block out energetically block out that part to be able to allow new energies to come in you definitely have two new people you have definitely someone who's interested in you someone who who is carrying a torch for you here knight of wands chasing this person so this is somebody who's very very interested they're physically attracted and I almost feel like I almost feel like you're not looking at this person they you might not even be aware of them or you know they're I feel like it's a really good match okay I don't feel like it's even a fire sign I just feel like it's somebody who's making their intentions very 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 known to you so let me pull out a few more cards to check out the dynamics here So whoever it is that is pursuing you in hot pursuit, okay, we have here the Eight of uh, Swords. And the Eight of Swords indicate a situation where we feel like we don't know all the information about the other person. Um, we might not know, like, are they looking for a relationship? Are they looking for a one night stand? Are they looking for people, you know, are they here today, gone tomorrow? Are they just looking for fun? Are they just, are they playing games with me? So I feel like you have somebody that is in hot pursuit of you, but you're not really sure where, what their intentions are. Okay. And I have here the two of swords as well as the seven of pentacles. So I feel like they're in it for the long haul. They've been waiting for you for a really long time. And I feel like, you know, with the sword energy, this is the energy that you exhibit. So they're really waiting for you to make up your mind and to make a decision regarding them because they're going to be waiting for quite some time. You've got somebody that is making it known, I feel, that they might be, you know, going to be sticking around for a while. But for whatever reason, you don't trust this person or you don't know what their intentions are or for whatever reason, you might be reading too much in between the lines and you're not able to see or take at face value whatever it is that they're telling you okay um money is going to start to trickle in i feel like for many of you you have overcome financial like hurdles okay so the money situation i feel like it's going to smooth itself out there are creative projects that are going to be coming into the picture and I feel like the advice here regarding your finances is take the opportunities that come in because I feel like these are training opportunities. So at face value, the pentacle looks very, very small, but in the greater scheme of things, you're going to be able to meet great people. You're going to be able to network. You're going to be able to build up your skills and then you're going to be very marketable okay so be patient with the process uh, don't daydream and zone out i feel like you need to kind of like um uh, try your best to try to stay focused okay bring your a game to any situation even though it might be monotonous or it might feel like so far removed from everything that you want to do but i feel like there there is knowledge to be gleaned here and so you need to you know stay alert stay awake all right um, best of luck with everything, Geminis. I will see you guys next month and I wish you all the best.